so we, uh, our next talk, we have Dr. M Dr. Michael Shermer. He is the publisher of Skeptic Magazine, a monthly columnist for Scientific American and presidential fellow at Chapman University. He is author of The Moral Arc, The Believing Brain, Why People Believe Weird Things, Why Darwin Matters, The Mind of the Market, How We Believe, The Science of Good and Evil. His next book is Heavens on Earth, The Scientific Search for Immortality, the Afterlife, and Utopia. He earned his PhD in the history of science from Claremont Graduate University and an MA in experimental psychology from California State University, Fullerton. Everyone, please give a big round of applause for Dr. Michael Shermer. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Nice to see you. I am the anchor. I'm the last speaker here, so uh, thanks for coming out to support the good cause of science. On the hottest day of the year, in the hottest year, a recorded record, but global warming's a myth. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> uh, how about we just kind of uh, do a little shout out for, um, for science. So on the count of three, we're going to say, we're going to all yell out, science rules. Ready? One, two, three. Science rules! Yeah, all right. Now, science and skepticism are the same thing. We have a booth over here. Skeptic Magazine is what I do. So on the count of three, let's do a skeptics rule. One, two, three, skeptics rule. Thank you very much, very nice. We have a saying in skepticism, amongst the many claims that we investigate, alternative medicine is a popular one. Uh, and as we have a saying, you know what you call alternative medicine with evidence? Medicine. And this is a nice lesson for this era of alternative facts. There are no alternative facts. You know what you call alternative facts with evidence? Facts. That's it. By the way, you know what you call love without evidence? Stalking. Stalking. Thank you. That's a nice little joke to Tim mentioned. Call out for our great science singer-songwriter champion. So if you do get a chance to come by the booth, please do so. I have a little speech I wrote to President Trump in case he happens to be watching on the unlikely event. 55 years ago this week, President John F. Kennedy addressed and hosted a dinner at the White House for every living Nobel laureate scientist in the Western Hemisphere. He introduced his speech by saying this is the greatest collection of minds since Thomas Jefferson dined here alone. It's a great comment because Jefferson, Franklin, Thomas Paine, Adams, and, and so forth. These were scientists. They didn't call themselves that. The word scientist wasn't even used until the 1860s. So they were natural philosophers. But they were doing what we would call science. They studied science. And when they built this country, they designed it to be a scientific experiment. Jefferson constantly referred to the democracy as an experiment. It is an experiment. And basically, they were arguing, nobody knows how to run a country. So you have to set it up so you can try things over and over and keep tweaking the variables. These are called elections. And we have laws that you can change and so forth. And so you run it for a while. You run and tweak the variables. You have another election. You try this. You try that. You rinse and repeat and repeat it and do it again. And we've been doing that now for over two centuries. In that sense, we are all citizen scientists in the sense that we all participate in the process of running these experiments. Let me give you some examples. If you think about it, we have 50 different states. Those are 50 different experiments because they all have slightly different constitutions and laws. So for example, different states have different gun control laws and you can run the experiment and see that the more guns you have in a state and the fewer controls you have, the higher the rate of gun violence, gun homicides, and gun suicides. The lower the number of guns, the more gun control you have, the lower number of gun homicides and suicides. Now, I'm not taking a political stand here. I'm just saying if you're in favor of the decline of violence and reducing homicide and suicide, we know what you should do. If you don't care, you want your guns, that's OK, too. But that's not what we're doing here in terms of running an exper experiment. Amendments to the Constitution are experiments. In 1920, we passed the 
19th Amendment that uh, granted women the right to vote. That was new. That was an experiment. It may not have worked. It worked. So now every country in the world, even Saudi Arabia, allows women to vote. Now granted, in Saudi Arabia, the women have to have their men drive them to the voting booth. So we, we still have some room for progress here. Okay. But that's an example. Uh, in 1919, we passed the 18th Amendment, which prohibited alcohol. The hypothesis was that if you prohibit alcohol, people will stop drinking and crime will go down. The opposite happened. Alcohol consumption went up, crime related to alcohol went up, so the 21st Amendment was passed in 1933 that overrode the 18th Amendment. Changing your mind is a virtue when the evidence changes. It's okay to be a flip-flopper in that sense. Experiments like teaching abstinence in sex education classes to teenagers with the hypothesis that they'll stop having sex doesn't work. You know what works? Contraception and information. Criminalizing abortions did not cause abortion rates to go down. It didn't work. It's a failed experiment. Foreign policy decisions are experiments. The United States intervening in the Second World War in Germany reduced the number of uh, overall deaths, most likely. Of course, that was a good thing. The United States not intervening in Rwanda during the start of the genocide led to an increase in deaths. The United States intervening in Iraq, probably a failed experiment. Intervening in Syria, I don't know. The data are not in yet. It's hard to say. Sometimes social science is complicated and it depends on the results. So I'm just saying these are types of things we can look at. Communism was a failed experiment, a century that produced roughly about 100 million deaths. North Korea and South Korea separated politically and economically in the 1950s. That was an incredible experiment. You can see the difference in the results from space. North Korea is dark and impoverished. South Korea is enriched and lighted up. Those are experiments that we can, as citizen scientists, consider. This is why Jefferson said, to conclude, no experiment could be more interesting than that where we are now trying which is democracy, and we can all participate in that. Now, one of the things that we've learned from science, particularly cognitive psychology, is that we're often wrong about what we believe. Both the left and the right and the center and the far right and the far, everybody's wrong about something. The only way to find out if you're wrong is to talk to other people, is to bounce your ideas off of other people, is to get information from other people. This is called free press and free speech. This is why it's embodied in the First Amendment. It's the only way to know. This is why we have to keep campuses open for all points of view, including the ones we don't like. But not including the ones we don't like, especially the ones we don't like. We must grant our devils their due before the law turns on us. That is a truism that is always there. So, President Trump, if you're listening, I will close with a quote from one of the great Americans that made the United States the most powerful nation on earth, for good or bad, however you feel about this, but J. Robin Oppenheimer uh, directed the establishment of the Manhattan Project and the development of the atomic bomb. He wrote in 1949, there must be no barriers to freedom of inquiry there is no place for dogma in science. The scientist is free and must be free to ask any question, to doubt any assertion, to seek for any evidence, to correct for any errors. Our political life is also predicated on openness. We know that the only way to avoid error is to detect it, and the only way to detect it is to be free to inquire. And we know that as long as people are free to ask, what they must, free to say what they think, and free to think what they will, freedom can never be lost and science can never regress. Thank you. Thank you so much. And have a great night. This was a great day today for science and freedom and openness. Thank you.
Awesome, awesome. If there is no God, is murder wrong? On the popular online site Prager University, the conservative radio talk show host, Dennis Prager, recently posted a video, If There Is No God, Murder Isn't Wrong.